Hi everybody and welcome to the Painting with Commentary video for the Nozzles Marvelous Miniatures, Goristro, episode 51 of Paint to Life. If you didn't see the episode starring uh, our Goristro Ravenous and his Minotaur companion Alessa, you can check it out here or in the link below. Let's go into how we made this miniature, shall we? So off the bat, this is going to be a little bit of a different episode, and that was this particular week I ran out of time and I uh, was really crunched for time so this painting video did not have the pop-ups which show which particular paints that i'm using i also painted this mini over a little bit of time and then kind of lost track of where i was and then i had some problems editing my actual episode together and as a result unfortunately i basically i'm gonna have to just kind of call it so i don't have the roll call at the beginning nor do i have the slips but as you can see right away taking some popsicle sticks you can get from the craft store and just slicing them in the middle um, breaking them into two just to create some beams now I use a little bit of sandpaper I think it's regular grit nothing fancy just to uh, get some of those slivers off uh, so as not to injure myself while working with it and what you're left with are these little beads now uh, not beads sorry beams I'm using three different contrast paints when I'm making these beams uh, Sigor Brown was one of them and as I said I'm gonna do this so we have Wildwood, Sigor Brown and Dark Oath Flesh are the three different colors Wildwood is the darkest, Sigor Brown is the meteor one and Dark Oath Flesh is the lightest and um, by, by, by applying them see there's the Wildwood it goes on very very dark and the three examples I have at the top by splitting it out this way I have three different colors of wood grain um, the Sigor is almost black, the, the wood grain doesn't show through that all that well, but the um, Sigor Brown and the Dark Oath does nicely. Those are all Citadel contrast paints, so uh, if you're ever going to paint wood and you want to kind of have a wood grain showing through, uh, there's a way to do it. Of course, you can test this out on your own first to see which color looks best. You know, if you like the darker wood, the wild wood, you could thin it out with some water or some contrast medium to let you have that rich, dark, what is that? coffee like mocha coloring while still letting some of the um, grain show through and of course the dark old flesh which is almost like a fleshy as it is shows through just nicely so now I'm applying these um, together to make a frame so I've, I've tested it there they're just loosely put together and I'm starting by making this little vertical piece which is gonna f form as the um, like the lattice for the pieces so I'm using lots of hot glue to assemble these. Don't worry about uh, the glue, we can paint over that later. Um, but having these boards and, and this framed up little block will allow us to uh, glue the boards on top and trim them as need be. Using a knife, I'm cutting off any extra hard glue. Now I also know that I'm going to need to have um, a banister or something that the uh, rider is gonna be able to, like this is like a table, so I'm putting these uprights in here. I'm arranging them accordingly, cutting them to size with my snips, and I'm going to put the boards around it. Now, the idea I had for this came from the fact that the Goristro is a siege monster, and in some of the articles I read, you know, they say the biggest Goristros can be 200 feet tall, like wow, that's insane, and there's entire villages of creatures living on them, and I thought that's pretty neat. Um, so I said, well, what if it was just a regular size Goristro, because that's my mini, but I do want something to ride it. So the idea of this battle platform kind of came to pass. You know, I'm making it out of wood that Alyssa, Alyssa would have found in the abyss, kind of whips it together, and as a result, you have this mobile platform. Now I'm alternating my colors. There she is in her unpainted form, going on there. And, uh, you know, I'm not leaving much space between each board. I'm kind of keeping them tight, but that's up to you, in fact. This is the first time I tried actually creating something for a Paint to Life episode out of scratch other than like clay or, or whatnot. Uh, this is the first wooden thing that I used, which I thought was a lot of fun. I made it big enough, I didn't need to go any further, and I'll put the end piece on, and then one more bar to seal it up, and then that little platform is done. Hot glue, you know, it's pretty messy. It leaves this little strands everywhere, but you can clean them up easily enough and paint over the big blobs if need be so there we go that's my finished battle platform so now the top part is just a board I'm starting to use crazy glue and I wanted to wrap it in like 
um, I don't know, rope, I guess. So I took some twine and I unbraided the twine so that I had the thinner parts that made up the twine. And as such, now I'm wrapping it, coating the whole pillar with some uh, crazy glue, wrapping the twine around it, holding it till it sets a little, and then going all the way down to have a rope texture on the upright. And I repeat that for both sides. Um, not necessary and maybe a little bit weird because, I mean, if you're putting it together with stuff you'd find, maybe you wouldn't have that. But by the same token, I think it looks interesting and it makes it look like it's a little bit more um, uh, effective than just being wood. Also, you saw there I used a lighter to burn and singe off the little teeny hairs on the rope and the twine. So off to our Goristro. So this is the first color that I'm using on him. And this is our base. Bugman's Glow. So, as followers of Paint Life who watch this know that I've got my airbrush now and I like to use it for basing of my minis. Uh, I could have just as easily put this on with an airbrush, I'm sorry, with a brush, a regular brush. And I will say that as I, the more and more I use my airbrush, uh, you know, it's a work in progress. I really enjoy it. I'd recommend anyone who's interested in mini painting to make the splurge to buy a little compressor and get an airbrush. Uh, it, it's a lot of fun. So I went on a little too light on my first coat uh, and I just interrupted myself because what I was saying was I also make a lot of trial and error in this video. This is a pretty, well you're going to see, I paint this guy a lot. You see my first coat was way too light, so now I'm going on a lot heavier. Um, you can also layer coats, you don't have to go all on one, you should lightly apply it and then heavier, you know, light on top of light on top of light. Um, also, there were some seam mold lines and some gaps I filled in the sky with liquid green stuff. It wasn't captured on film and I painted over them gray before I started this Bugman's Glow so you didn't really see them but they're on there. I'd never be afraid to use liquid green stuff to fill those big seams and gaps if so you have a nice finished product that has no black lines where there are gaps. So next, I'm still applying the Bugman's Glow, but now I've added some Nuln Oil to it. I thought I was going to do some sh shading up front, almost like a Zenithal, but a targeted Zenithal. This was a mistake. I left it in the video to show you. Yeah, I'm putting some darker spots and areas on the abs and whatnot, but it's all going to get painted over nine times from Sunday before this project is over, so everything I'm doing here is a waste. Um, maybe not for another time when I'm a little bit more focused on my approach, but this step was not needed. Okay, back to the brush. Now that my airbrushing is complete, I saw that the hands were very green looking in the player's handbook. So I used Death Guard Green from Citadel to do his hands right up to where the fur is. This is the beginning of my brush work. And I really like the contrasting the colors of that kind of Bugman's glow and, and the Death Guard's green for the hands. Of course, I will overdo this later with some contrast paint, which, while it is intense, it does allow some of this green to show through, but not as much as it looks right now. In fact, I think I liked it when the hands were green. Should have probably found a way to keep them green. Similarly, the horns. So the horns, I'm using an XV98 from, uh, from my paint list here. Yeah, XV88. It's from Citadel as well. It's a very mustardy kind of yellow baby poop brown that I'm applying to the horns. Now this is the base layer, so it's it looks very primary. You know, you got your basic colors with no layering, with no whatnot. I, I really like using contrast paints to, you know, contrast paints on their own are okay, but when used with different colors, they give you all kinds of different options. It's like a shade with pigment and um, that's my favorite part about contrast paints. The 32 and the line combined with the, you know, 150 of the Citadel paints lets you have a, quite a variation of different colors you can achieve, as we'll see here. All right, now I'm painting all of these individual little bony parts. I'm using Death Claw Brown again. I'm pretty sure that the contrast paint I'm using later was too intense and probably overkilled this. Um, I can tell you in advance that I'm gonna be using Cygore Brown contrast paint later, but I really should have thinned it out with some water or contrast medium, because it's just gonna destroy all these little base colorings. It's too dark and it blends them all. And 
I'm sure that they do have an effect, but unfortunately, all this work also is kind of going to get overdone later. Hooves. Um, these are just your standard... Uh, what color do I use for those? Administrative gray from Citadel. And now onto the gold bands. This is a Liberator gold. I like this gold color. Uh, because it's not so shiny. It's a little bit more um, brassy than gold as an auric armor gold for example this is nice and brassy and when i apply my shade to it later it'll make it even look more dirty and whatnot inside his mouth we're going to use a contrast uh paint the black one uh, which i didn't put in my paint list but whenever the black contrast mouth paint <laughs> i like the contrast paint for mouths and holes like that because it leaves a little bit outside that will uh retain some de different depths of darkness instead of just being this black hole okay i'm trying to see the color i use on his face here this is knight's something Qu knight's quest or flesh didn't write it down but knight's quest or flesh with a kislev flesh layer on top so the Knight's Questor, I apologize if I'm saying that wrong, but that's what the, the original color is, on top of the Bugman's Brown, and now I'm putting this on top, which is very intense. You can see it looks a little clown makeup-y. The Knight Questor went nicely on the Bugman's, and then this uh, is pretty intense, but my solution to cut it is next in the next step here. Let's take a look what happens. So I put the raised areas with this Kislev flesh on top of the Knight Quester's flesh. But now he looks like he's wearing Joker makeup. So let's grab some more of the Bugman's... Oh, we're coming back to that. Okay. So this is just a little bit of burgundy on his gums. Uh, not the teeth, just the gums. So that's just a... Any kind of burgundy will do. It's a very small. You can even use red if you wanted. Um, I don't like red, I wanted a more pink. Actually, it's pink horror, my bad. Pink horror is his gums. But as you see, his the layering is really intense on his face, and I said, oh, that's not gonna work. So, I go back to the Bugman's Glow, and I cut it with extra water, just to make it a little extra watery, and I apply it to bring all those flesh tones with the undertone Bugman's Glow, and that kind of seals the deal. So now it's time for the eyes. I use a little bit of Troll Slayer Orange, Fire Dragon Bright, and Flash Glitch Yellow in synchronous, uh, or not synchronous, but in layers. Um, starting with the darkest orange, lighter orange, and then the yellow to build up to a pupil with a little dot of white in the finished version to give us those nice glowing eyes. So now we're using a contrast paint that's Agorath, Agoras Dunes. You, if you watch Paint to Life all the time, you'll see I, I do like the Agoras Dunes. It's got a nice yellow-brown tone to it. And applying it on that XV88 really gives me a cool um, dark brown. or a brown, but it leaves those nice detail lines. And um, because it's somewhat transparent, that yellowy brown comes out through it, and they look more like horns. Make sure you get underneath. You want to apply it and let it set and not leave big pools but you don't want to wipe away the parts where it's sort of settling so there it is on top of the horns don't worry if you catch those gold mans we'll touch them up later okay and now this is where i started getting weird as you see i lose that nice green in my hands i'm applying the Sigor brown contrast paint over his fur to see what it'll look like and i'm putting it on the hands too now it does turn the hands kind of a burgundy color probably because of the green underneath I liked it though. I looked at it and said, that's cool. If it wasn't green underneath, if it had been brown underneath, it wouldn't have looked like that. It would have been too dark. But the green underneath, the Death Guard's uh, green, that's a sort of green brown. And, and that's kind of like a really good color for those fleshy hands. I kind of missed the starkness of the green. And I guess I could have lightened it up on the hands to allow some more of that green to shine through. But you can still see it and the hands do not look brown. They look green brown, and that's what I was trying to do. And I looked at it and say, well, how does it look? I sucked up some of that extra in the pods. How does it look on the fur? And I said, oh, that's really good. I'm gonna put it all over the fur. This is why all that extra work that I did 
is coming off you know like that when I said I mixed in some null oil with the um, Bugman's glow to paint his skin that's all gonna get overwritten here all these little things that I did with Doom Bull Brown on his back they're all gonna get painted over with this Sigor Brown and uh, they all come out much darker I have to repaint them all and again lesson learned even though the ab work I did with that see how the different abs showed was nice it's all gonna get lost here and I'll have to use dry brushing later to bring those abs back out I don't know if I would argue that it's transparent and it's see th you can still see it through I'm pretty sure the null and oil mixed with the bugman's glow you can't see through in this it's a lost step and it was a waste of time but you know this is when you push along and you paint and you figure things out as you go uh, make sure you don't I will say this you know it's a big model so you're painting down his leg don't leave a big pool of it on his shoulder while you go down to do the leg make sure you're constantly spreading it out you don't want it to set and dry and leave a big cakey solid section where you didn't spread it out fast enough you want to push it all over the place so it doesn't settle and pool see his back and his little shoulders a little darker that's probably where it was now i missed all these little bones that you can see they got super dark from the saigor i have to retouch them up again um, knowing full well I'm going to put the platform on his back, but that's okay. I'm going to get them ready. So back on with those little bones. And they're going to get painted over yet one more time. Now this is my secret for those bands. It's already liberated gold. Looks great. It's not really a secret. Who am I kidding? It's just um, a shade. And it's called Raikland Flesh Tone. If you have it in your arsenal, it's very similar to Agrax Earthshade, but it's a little more um, red slash brown. When you apply that to the Liberator Gold, it gives a nice tarnished, dirty gold look. Liberator Gold already looks pretty cool, but by applying that, it just makes it look less treasury and more like dirty gold. So now we're into the dry brushing of his body. I'm using Vermin Lord Hide here. And realized, geez, that's about the same color as the Saigor Brown. So then I switched to Rise of Rust. And that worked out nicely. See how orange it is, but see how it's pulling the top levels of the furs up and going heavy on the abs gently to pull up the um, the definition of those ab muscles. So see, all that darkness we've stacked up is now showing nicely. Just make sure you apply it to the top layer. And I know it's super orange and all, but that's okay because that's kind of the color of the grease throw anyways. And um, all of our undertone with all that Saigor Brown and the Bugman's Glow is still there and the orange is just on top to give your, your layers of fur. And I like it. Now I'm putting some something on those little bony things. Unfortunately I can't see the... Maybe it's Agarax Earthshade or, or it might be... No, it's the yellow one again. Agarax Dunes. That's what I'm putting on there. It doesn't matter. Those little bone flecks got lost. I, if I wanted to I could have made them um, a lighter contrast like a uh, bone yellow or whatever or a bone like wraith bone or something but I didn't want them to stand out too much so now I'm building up the base with milliput another reason one of the reasons why my video is so late this week with how much I did so I could have just built this base up and be done with it okay but there's a couple things first of all this mini didn't stand up straight he was way crooked and he was easy to tip over so I used some filler underneath to level him out so he stands straight. That's when I came up with the idea of him. His pose is that of like this striding monster. I mean, it's 20 feet tall, guys. Can you imagine that? It's the size of a T-Rex. So I'm thinking, what if he's like smashing through a wall? If it's supposed to be a siege monster, let's do that. So as you see this, that piece of XPS foam, so I'm, instead of using the base he came with, I cut out a piece of XPS foam to service his base, the rectangle there. And then I built it up with milliput. I had to make a, a center part that was vaulted up for the wall to sit on, which is why I have that piece there, making sure that it's going to be balanced and level. Here's another angle. Um, I was trying to give you guys a different perspective. Unfortunately, my big fucking left hand is in the way. Pardon my French. But uh, it was an intense model. <laughs> uh, you can see, though, how it turned out. And then I painted it with... Um, some brown whatever that was mm, I don't know brown and then I dry brushed it green again all lost you'll never see any of this this is a wasted step see how the milliput dried though We've all blotchy this is why it's a wasted step see how I've left room for a wall under his his haunches there 
and there's a little bit of his original platform. Now I'm using the technical paints, Sterling Mud and Sterling Battlemire, and I'm filling in the cracks. The Milliput dried overnight. It looks good. It looks very not natural, of course, but using these Citadel technical paints as filler, wherever there's cracks in the Milliput is what I'm doing here. Use a junk brush. You don't want to clog a good brush. And those flat surfaces, I know I've left myself for a wall. And that's what I do. Hence why painting it brown and then dry brushing it green was a waste because it just gets completely obliterated by this stuff. But that's okay. Now it's time to make the stones. So I mixed, these are just craft paints, black and gray. I didn't want them to be too dark. I didn't want them to be too light. So I used some craft paints. And then I used uh, my foam cutter to take pieces of XPS foam and cut them into rectangles and then individual stones. Now the stones are not perfect squares or rectangles, I should say. Some of them are trapezoidal. Trapezoidal? Is that a word? It is now. Anyways, then I got all messy painting them up with this like a prime, okay? And here's what they look like when they were all out. See, I stacked them together to form bricks and make sure I had enough and then I had to apply a couple coats. Fun fact, top left corner, you can also see the flags that ultimately I'm going to use. I used some linen cloth and I painted on Tetris symbols because it's the Isle of Tetris with that stencil there. And now I'm testing my wall. This angle worked well. I'm glad I did this. My hand was in the way. So I'm testing to see, oh, speak of the devil, hello hand. So I'm testing to see where do I want these to be. He's busting through, he's kicking it over. The first row will be all intact. The top ones will not be. I'm using super glue and I'm gluing them on. Um, I've already dry brushed them, you can see in this picture. Uh, and someone had commented that I should have put a little more detail in them, some cracks and more weathering. And they're absolutely right. The wall is very basic. It doesn't look like as much as an exterior wall, but I was crunched for time and I didn't really think of it, so. Now I've got this, the lighting looks weird in this shot because I'm using a headlamp because it's really hard to see with the shadows, but underneath the wall I'm using more of that sterling mud to fill in the gaps. Now I don't have much footage of me assembling the basing for this, but you can see already the straps on his shoulders. I got some suede from the dollar store, some suede to look like leather belt and I wrapped it around him and glued it on. You can see him there with his belt and, the, and how he looks head on. I think he looks happy. There are my flags, there are my suede pieces the wall that's busted and it's all glued in place and um, yeah now it's just time to base it so I added some dirt and then I um, added some glue Mod Podge actually because it's a little less runny than the glue and now it's time to just diff to use different type of grasses I wanted two different sides one was to be outside one was to be inside so the inside I used regular kind of grass and different hill turfs. The outside I used longer grass and I made some vines which we're going to see here in some pictures. I never got any footage of me painting less of the Minotaur. I painted her at a friend's house and as you can see I had no footage. Her horn did break though so her right horn um, is there and I'm going to tell you something else. I used a knife to cut. She was holding a battle axe. The original Minotaur looked like this. And that Minotaur was holding a battle axe, as you can see in this picture. So I cut the, min the battle axe out of her hands. I used my Dremel tool to put a hole in her hands for the chain. And then I accidentally burned off her horn. So I had to rebuild it with green stuff. So that's the story of Alessa. And unfortunately, I don't have painting for her. But you can paint her any way you like if you're recreating this kind of uh, mini. So she was done. I used my snips to cut her off of her PVC base and used a knife to trim the rest that was under her hooves. And that's Alessa who would be glued onto the back of my platform once it's seated. So let's take a look at how it looks all finished. So there's the base, the bottom of which I put some little green leaves on from Green Stuff World on the outside of the wall. And that's when I realized I could make vines running up that wall so it looks like it's an out exterior wall. So here's the finish. There's the chain also came from Green Stuff World glued to the tip of those horns. I put a stone in the Garistro's hand, Ravenous, and more leaves. This is the front. There's the back with some of the vines I was telling you about. Here she is glued on her platform, which is supported by the belt. I just kept layering on more of that suede to thicken the belt up. I think it has a cool look to it. The chain looks pretty awesome. The rope, I made a standard out of a piece of wood and hung my Isle of Tetris flag to it. 
uh, with that yellow Tetra shape. <laughs> And there she is, and the flag is roped to the thing. She's had from the head on, you can see she's holding that chain. Not that she could overpower the thing, but she could tug on its horns to steer it left and right. Uh, I did his teeth with some, um, like a, an off-white for his teeth. And there's this action scene, this action pose, where he's knocking these stones down. And she's kind of just riding him in a battle. I love it. Here you go, those vines, little pieces of moss glued onto the stone and then little teeny individual leaves glued onto the moss to give the vines like a leafy vine appeal or feeling I should say. Well, that's pretty much it. That's one of the favorite minis that I've done and having the extra time allowed me to get super creative in building this stuff. See how he's, these suede ropes, I looped them right into the actual platform so he could take, you could actually take that platform off if you wanted to. Uh, of course, this mini is glued to the the wall so you wouldn't do that but you can make it modular the chains are just glued with hot glue to his horns and then the hot glue is painted the same color gold to look like the rest of the uh, gold and it just all blends together anyways that's ravenous and alessa i hope you liked this video sorry i was missing the title cards let me know in the comments below if you've actually missed them or if me just calling the paints was good enough i'm not trying to be lazy but it does take me a lot of work to make paint to life episodes and there's no sense doing the extra stuff if nobody uh is you know cares but mind you i'll probably still do them as normal next time because i am a bit of a completionist and i like to keep going the way i start anyways i hope you enjoyed this uh, episode i hope you enjoyed the episode if you didn't watch the episode go check it out right now my storytelling is my my passion and, and i want you guys to appreciate not just the finished paintings but the actual stories as well so that's all i have for you tonight uh, i hope you had a good time hope everyone in your family's safe i'm gma tank wash your hands people